Amen. Anybody excited about Jesus this morning? Amen. Amen. That's what I love to hear. John chapter 4, verse 5. I still hear pages turning. It reads as this. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. I'm going to title this message, This Drink Will Change Your Life. This drink will change your life. Amen. Uh, here in this narrative, we see this woman from Samaria, or what many call the woman at the well. We see this woman coming to Jacob's well to draw water for herself. To her surprise, Jesus was at this well and the text says, he asked her to give him a drink. This is powerful because this broke Jewish customs. Number one, he spoke to a woman. Number two, she was a Samaritan Gentile woman and number three, drinking after her would have made him ceremonially unclean. But one of the things I know about this story of the Samaritan woman is that it is a picture of you and I. And it begins to depict the relationship that Jesus Christ has with each and every one of us. It shows that Jesus Christ is graceful. It shows that Jesus Christ is merciful. And it shows that most importantly that Jesus Christ loves each and every one of us. Romans 5 and 8 says it like this. But God commends his love toward us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Here in this scripture, it, to me it simply means that even before you can even speak to Jesus, even before you knew who Jesus was, he had a love for you. He had a compassion for you. He said that I love you so much that I'm not going to wait for you to say anything to me. I'm going to say something to you. Do I have any believers this morning that understand that they're here in this place only by the grace of God and the mercy of God and that Christ loves you so much that he gave his dying son to save a wretch like you and me. Amen. Many people can't clap right there because they don't understand the price that Jesus Christ paid. The scripture says that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. While we were clubbing and pimping and thugging, Christ died on the cross so he could save a wretch just like you and me. Amen. And I love it because uh, it simply means in this uh, verse that Jesus Christ began to speak to us. And when I began to read this passage, it symbolizes that Jesus began to speak to this Samaritan woman. Now let me paint this picture. Jews during that time did not have any dealings with the Samaritan people. He, they didn't have dealings with the Samaritan people because they were deemed dirty people. They were deemed to be some people that was outside of the will of God. They were deemed to be some people that Christ didn't necessarily come to save. But Jesus Christ began to break every tradition and he began to break every custom and he began to say, I know my assignment is to the Jews, but I see this woman that has a need and I'm going to do whatever I have to do to meet that need. So the scripture says that he said, he gave her a word, he said it like this. He says, woman, give me a drink. Now I want y'all to begin to think with me for a moment. 
Jesus Christ, he's the son of God. Jesus Christ, he has everything uh, that, that, that this world can ever give. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ is Elohim. He's God. He really don't need anything. He had the ability to call angels to begin to come to his beck and call. But for some reason, he stopped by Samaritan to speak to a woman that he shouldn't talk to. He broke every custom. He broke every tradition. And he said to this woman, give me a drink. Think about it. Jesus Christ asking you for a drink. Jesus Christ asking you to give something to him that you want yourself. When I began to see this text, it reminded me that God was saying that in order for me to get what I have to you, you have to be willing to give something that I'm asking from you. Don't miss that point. Don't miss that point. I'm talking to everybody in here. In, in order for you to get to that next level that you're believing God to bring you to, he's going to always ask you to give him something. Amen. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you give God a drink? Yes, when I'm talking about this drink, I'm not just talking about some water. I'm talking about those things that Christ has been talking to you about giving to him. I'm, I'm talking about those things that you have keep kept in secret that only you and God knows that you're dealing with in your life. I'm talking to some people that's dealing with fornication. I'm talking to some people that's dealing with adultery. I'm talking to some people that's dealing with some loneliness. You're about to commit suicide and you're scared to tell anybody. But can I say, Jesus is saying to you today, can you give me a drink? He's just asking for the very thing that you're holding dear to yourself. Now, let me paint this picture. The text, the text, the story, it says this. Jesus came to Samaria. The sun was beating on him. He was weary. Jesus wanted a drink for himself. But yet he stopped by to let this dirty woman, this Samaritan woman know that, hey, I want me a drink for myself. So I want to ask you, can you give me a drink so you can begin to deny what you want so you can give it to me so I can begin to release what I have in my life over to you. Y'all missing, y'all missing. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't understand why Pastor Charles coming to this church giving God a crazy praise. Because I understand the stuff and the muck and the mire that God has delivered me from. I know that when I come into this place, I'm coming to give my all to the Most High God. Everything that's wrong in me, I come to submit it to the altar so Jesus can begin to exchange my bad for good. So God is saying to this church, can you give me a dream? Do you have something on the inside of you that you've been struggling with? Do you have something on the inside of you that you've been dealing with? Do you have something on the inside of you that you've been crying at night and you ain't told nobody about? Jesus is saying the same thing to this Samaritan woman. You come looking for a drink, but what I'm looking for is for you to give me the very thing that you want over to me. And that leads me to my first thought. If God wants something from you, it just simply means that God is trying to get something to you. Anytime the Lord asks you for something, he got something better for you. Anytime the Lord asks you to give up something, it's something that he wants to release in your life. But so many people can't get to the next level that God has for them to get to because they hold on to the very thing that has been tearing them down. But Christ is saying, in order for me to put something new in your hands, you got to let go of the old thing. I'm preaching better than y'all saying something, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. This is a principle. This is a principle that all of us have to know and understand. In order for God to do something new in your life, you got to be willing to give him the old. Come on. If you want God to begin to anoint you for the next task and assignment that he has on your life, you got to be willing to let go the old task and assignment that he had for you. Amen. The thing that began to separate Abraham into receiving the promise that God had for him was he remained obedient to the voice of God. You have to begin to understand that, that, that God told Abraham to go sacrifice his son Isaac. 
And he began to take him up to be sacrificed. That was one assignment. But the scripture says God wanted to make sure that Abraham was going to trust him so much that when he began to pick up that knife to sacrifice his son Isaac, God gave Abraham an olive. I'm here today to say, don't be hooked up with the all so much that you miss the new that God has for your life. You trying to hold up to the Isaac of old, but God is trying to release you into the Isaac that's the promise. And if he wouldn't have killed Isaac, if he would have killed Isaac, he would have killed his promise because he wasn't able to hear the next voice that God had for him to receive in his life. God is speaking to his church today. He's saying you've been praying and it's not that he hasn't been hearing your prayer. It's just that he can't get nothing new into your life because you're still holding on to those old things. Give me that picture. Give me the picture. Next slide, please. This is what God has in store for all of our lives. He, and, and when I saw this, uh, the first scripture that began to come to mind that says, Suffer the little children that wants to come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. It just simply means that anytime you come before God, you must come like a little child. Just like a little child that's willing to give up the very thing that they have been longing for, the very thing that they have been holding on to so much. God is saying, you've been holding on to so much in your life that in order for me to give you this big gift, this big promise that I have for you, you have to be willing to release this little thing. Can I say some of you all are in a relationship that you should not be in? And it's nothing more than a little thing. But you got to be willing to let go of that little thing so you can get God's big promise that he has for you. And the thing about this picture, you don't actually see the promise that God has for you in your life. The scripture says, it is only God that knows, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. And hallelujah. And to give you a hope and a future. But you have to be willing to accept and receive God's plan so you can get rid of your plan because your plan is limited. God's plan is limitless. If you want more, you got to be willing to give up the less. Stop settling for the cheaper when God wants you to receive the deeper. John 4 and 9, the reason is this. John 4 and 9, the reason. It says, Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Living water. I see two things here. The Samaritan woman, she began to question God, and she began to question him. And she began to actually become intimidated by who this man was. She began to say, hold on, why are you talking to me? You should have no dealing with me. So to me, that symbolizes that this woman had a self-esteem issue. And secondly, uh, she stood before Jesus, and get this, and didn't even know who he was. So many believers, they go into their prayer closet, and they pray to God, Lord, bless me. Lord God, increase me. Lord God, do what you want to do in me. And then when things begin to pop off and it looks like the enemy is coming in, it's not, can I say that it's not always the enemy? It's just God stripping some things from your life. And he wants to get your attention so you can begin to trust him. Because so often we as believers, we always want to hold on to the thing that we have right now. But God says, no, 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 trust me, baby. Trust me, son. Trust me, daughter. Let go of what you have. So you can only depend on me and I will then give you everything that you need. Amen. But 
a Samaritan woman, she remained intimidated to who this man was. Didn't even know he was Jesus. I got a question. If Jesus really began to change, would you even know it was him? When he begins to remove some stuff from your life, will you even know that it's God? Can I say, the devil ain't the only thing that take things from us. The devil ain't the only one that removes things from us. Sometimes God will speak and begin to move in our life so he can get that situation out of your way so you don't have any more anything other than to trust God for the next step or the next phase in your life. And this is where this woman was. She was more so concerned with this well than she was concerned with this living water that Jesus Christ had for her. Let's look at John chapter 4 and 11. John chapter 4 and 11. And I'm going to read this. John 4 and 11. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. And this well is deep. Number one, that's crazy because we know that this is Jesus. If he wanted to call water up, he could have called it up without having a cup in his hand. Where then do you get that living water? Get this. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? This crazy fur. This crazy fur. Can I say help in the church? This crazy. You, 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 got, you got to see this. She's talking to the Son of God right now. But she's referencing the Son of God against Jacob's well. She's so concerned with trying to get him this drink from the well. And she's totally missing that God is saying, I'm not talking about the water that's in the well. I'm talking about the water that's in me. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. So often God wants to do something new in your life. But you're looking at what's in front of you. You're looking at the money that you have. You're looking at the career that you have. You're looking at your children acting crazy. You're looking at your husband tripping out. But God is saying, get your eyes off of your well. Put your eyes on the wall. And when you put your eyes on the wall, it'll cause you to not settle for the well. When God wants you to receive his living water. Do I have any saints that want to receive Christ's living water? I'm talking about the water that never runs dry. I'm talking about the water that will always satisfy. I'm talking about the water that will always quench your thirst. Some of you all are single and you're trying to find love in another man. But can I say God is the only living man and the only living water. That can satisfy you from the inside out. Don't, don't put your trust into the temple. Don't put your trust in the things that you can readily see. Because I love this. I love this passage because it says that God is saying to the Samaritan woman, the well you're trying to drink from. It's only temporary. But the will that I have planned for you to receive is eternal. But as long as you keep your eyes on the temporary, you'll always have temporary problems. You'll always have temporary provisions. You'll always have temporary support. But when you begin to hook up with Jesus, he'll begin to allow you to step over into the supernatural. The supernatural is where your blessing is. The supernatural is where your provision is. The supernatural is where Christ wants you to live. But can you give up the well so you can receive Christ's water? 
and she still missed it. And I got to close with this. It wasn't until, until Jesus began to come down, get this, on her level. And he said it like this. Woman, go get your husband. The woman said, I don't have a husband. Jesus said, and you are right by saying this. Because you've had five husbands. And the man that you are with, with right now, he's not even your husband. And then the woman came to her senses and said, I now perceive you to be a prophet of God. What happened? God had to come down to our level. And I want to say this. Don't let God have to get so personal with you that you finally receive that he's the true and living God. God's presence is in him. And sometimes people, they sit down like he ain't here. Don't wait to go through some turmoil in your life for you to begin to develop your relationship with God. God is saying there's living water in the house right now. All you have to do is stretch up your hands and receive him. Don't worry about those women. Don't worry about the temporal things. Don't worry about the houses, the cars. God will give you all things that pertain to life in God when you seek Him. And the scripture says, and I close with this, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst again. Some of y'all want it that living water. But the only way that you're going to get the living water that Christ has for you, you got to begin to receive it in your spirit. You got to begin to lift up hands. You got to begin to talk to the Most High God. You got to begin to have communication with the Savior. Hallelujah. You got to get over people just praying for you and you going by your way. You got to begin to pray for your own self.